The Langley Wastewater Treatment Plant opened in 1977. In 1998, Metro Vancouver took over operation of the plant. 12 million liters of commercial and residential wastewater are treated here daily. Hi, my name is Brian Martin, and today we're at the Langley Wastewater Treatment Plant, and I'm going to show you how it all works. Three full-time employees are responsible for running the plant. In addition, a lab technician comes in twice a week to perform ongoing tests to ensure outflow is safe for release. This is the beginning of the wastewater treatment plant called the Headworks. This is where we use two Archimedes screws to pump all of the solids and liquids up to the screens. Let's go take a closer look. An Archimedes screw is a simple and effective way to move water uphill. Also called a screw pump, the Langley version uses a helical screw turning within a tube to lift wastewater up to the drum screens at the start of the treatment process. Archimedes screws are often used in wastewater treatment plants because they can pump water with suspended debris and solids without clogging the system. Behind me are the drum screens. They remove all the solids larger than just a few millimeters. Removing plastic, fabric, and other non-organics is an essential step in preparing the wastewater for secondary treatment. From the screens, the solids get ground up and compacted and drop into the bin behind me. After dewatering and compacting, this material will be trucked to Metro Vancouver's Waste to Energy Facility in Burnaby for incineration. This generates energy and reduces the volume before the remaining ash is sent to the landfill for final disposal. Behind me is the equalization pond. Half the flow goes directly to the trickling filters. The other half comes here and gets aerated. The aeration helps prevent odors and also promotes biological activity for later on in the process. From the equalization pond, we come to one of the most important parts of the treatment plant process, the trickling filters. Wastewater comes out of the nozzles and hits deflectors. From there, the water falls onto a honeycomb-shaped lattice underneath the deflectors. Bacteria living on the honeycomb lattice consume organic material such as carbon, nitrogen, and sugars that is in the wastewater. Without the trickling filter, these bacterial microorganisms could end up being discharged into the Fraser River, where they would have a negative impact on the ecosystem. The bacteria forms a green slime, which sloughs off the honeycomb lattice and is sent to the activated sludge tanks. The activated sludge tank takes the bacterial slime from the trickling filters and mixes it with heavy, dense biomass so that it settles out easily in the clarifiers. The wastewater is also aerated in the sludge tank, which assists in making it safer for the environment. At the clarifier, the liquid is slowed down so that the heavy material drops to the bottom and the light, clear liquid ends up at the top. As you can see here, the solids settle to the very bottom of the tank. In the trickling filter process, we end up creating on site an excess of solids. These excess solids end up in our aerobic digester. The digester works as a giant liquid composter. All the organic carbon material is broken down using heat and oxygen, a process called volatile solids reduction. What is left over is a reduced mass of biofilm that is then shipped to Anasis Island. The final step is our chlorine contact tank. This is where we add chlorine to allow it to react with all the harmful pathogens in the water. At the end of the process, sodium bisulfate is added. This removes the chlorine so our final effluent is safe for fish. This chemical is very similar to what you would use in a fish tank to allow tap water to be safe for fish. The effluent is tested twice a day to make sure it is within acceptable limits. Over the years, the plant has undergone several upgrades. The next major project will be the installation of new secondary clarifiers scheduled to begin operation in 2015.